What's going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel and today's video is going to cover how to build a game in Python as well as the different modules you can use including tkinter or kinter, um, pygame and kivi and we'll discuss the pros and cons of each of them, what type of applications might make the most sense for each, when you would want to use the different ones as well as the approximate difficulty required uh, to get started with each type. So um, if you find this useful, please check out the rest of the channel for more great content. Leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. And without any further ado, let's get going. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is just in general, building games in Python. Uh, Python is not the programming language that you would use to build like a three-dimensional multi-world console game. You would use a, an app, a game engine like Unity, something like that to do something on that scale. Python's a better programming language for uh, computer widget applications, two-dimensional um, games that are kind of on a, a flat surface. Um, it Python is super useful if you want to just build little quick widgets that serve kind of one function. Um, it's object oriented style makes that really easy. Um, and again, for any graphical user interface where you're actually going to have a playable game, you're going to need to use a module, either tkinter, which comes in installed with Python today, um, or Kivi or Pygame, which you import as a module. So if you do want to build a game all in Python purely to uh, kind of flex your Python abilities or make kind of a fun little program, um, I, I created a hangman game just to kind of illustrate what that would look like. Um, if you want to learn how to build this game, the tutorial is on the channel. But you can kind of see here, it's not a ton of code and honestly a lot of the rungs of code are me drawing a little stick figure onto the console whether or not the players died um, so it's a really simple program even though it took a little while to build and I'll go ahead and play it here just so you can see like if the secret word was apple and you guessed a Q we record where the guess has been um, we record correct guesses incorrect guesses we'll draw the little dead body onto the screen one at a time let's guess a letter that's correct p we update the letters um, in the secret word but you can see right here even though you know it's a fun bit of python programming um, it really isn't much of a game you wouldn't uh, present this to someone and say look i built a game you could say look i'm proud of my python code and that's great um, but to make any sort of game where you would actually want to play it you have to incorporate some uh, graphical user interface and the easiest one the one that kind of comes built in with python is called kinter or t kinter um, because it's spelled this way it's t-k-i-n-t-e-r it is super easy to get started with the tutorial series on this youtube channel um, it covers start to finish how to build several different applications which i'll just cover briefly here um, to show you what we did but we built a tic-tac-toe game um, nothing too uh, crazy going on here but uh, you'll see when we run this you can choose whether to play as x's or o's um, go ahead and hit start and then it creates a game board and then you are actually playing against a computer so this is kind of I would say the first like um, really enjoyable maybe playable um, game that we built and uh, it doesn't take very long it's not super difficult and the formatting makes a lot of sense just intuitively if you're more of a programmer than a game designer um, this might be the easiest one for you because it's really easy to just um, pick up the syntax very quickly whereas Pygame and Kivi which we'll talk about next both have a fair bit of unique syntax in their modules whereas uh, Kinter, Tkinter um, it really only has like two or three things that you wouldn't be used to seeing normally and it's very good about prompting you for what needs to go in each location so overall uh, Kinter is used much more for things like this uh, calculator that we also created in a tutorial series um, 
where like you can um, perform a function. So you're doing like utilities, uh, you can sort of build your, obviously you don't need a calculator, your computer has one, but um, this style of widget where maybe you have one sort of function where it's annoying and time consuming every time you do it. And so you would write yourself a quick little script and uh, create a quick little graphical user interface in Kinter to just perform that function for you. Um, that's its real strength. Its strength is not in game development. And so uh, we'll get now into the two uh, Python modules that their strength really is game development. And so we'll start with Pygame. There are a bunch of Pygame tutorial series on this channel all over YouTube if you want to learn to build all kinds of games. Um, we've done Space Invaders on this channel. We've done Pong. We've done like an idle clicker app style game. Um, this uh, Pong I'll just show you real quick. We made it with a color changing ball and used WASD. The score increments anytime your um, computer opponent uh, or you hit the ball and um, the speed increases as you go up and up. But you can tell like this is actually a fun video game. Like it's, it's replayable, it's rapid. Um, and again, just looking at the script here, the whole thing start to finish only takes like 130 lines of code. Probably less if I cleaned it up a little bit. That's not really how I roll. Um, but the strength of Pygame is their module has tons of built-in things like sprite uh, collision detection and um, just sort of things that were obviously created with the intention of making games and not just a generic computer application. Whereas uh, Kinter kind of looks like a Windows XP, uh, you know, Windows 2000, like, like, um, widget format it, it doesn't look real modern it's not really tailored for the game development side of things whereas pie game you can tell from the name pie game that's all it was made for so a lot of the things you would hope for like um, enemies uh, being deleted creating classes of, of different objects and calling them sprites collision detection masking things like that a, a lot of the way it handles sound and controller uh, player movement is really intuitive um, at least I, I picked it up fairly rapidly and I don't uh, have a background in game development. So it made a lot of sense to me. I like Pygame a lot. The big limitation of Pygame is um, much like Kinter, it doesn't just transfer from platform to platform to platform. So you can maybe export your program on Windows and run it on Mac and uh, vice versa. Um, even then, you might have a little bit of formatting tweaks you have to make, but it's not super robust cross-platform, and you wouldn't make mobile apps or mobile games with it. Um, so that uh, is kind of the big drawback of Pi Game. It's a ton of fun. It's pretty easy to use, and you can certainly share your games and send it to friends. Um, but if you're looking for app development and building mobile games or games that are just really uh, robust cross-platform, then that brings us to the last thing we're going to talk about today, which is called Kivi. And I saved Kivi for last because one, it's the most powerful, and two, in my personal opinion, it's the hardest one to get started with. It has the most unique syntax. It has a completely separate design language where you would actually create most of the visual elements of your game in a separate .kv file and then you would need to incorporate that into your Pygame so you build the the functionality and how each uh, player action is handled in um, in the main Python um, and you use object oriented programming but you have to become familiar with the Kivi syntax and even though you don't have to separate into a similar file which the separate file is definitely the standard for larger um, applications you would still need to become familiar with the Kivi syntax even to code it directly into your Python file so in my opinion it is the hardest one but uh, enough about the negatives the, the great thing about it is it's really robust at cross-platform. If you create a Kivi program that's properly formatted, it can be used in Mac, Windows, Linux, um, iOS, or Android app stores as well. So if people decide to make applications with Python, they almost always are using the uh, Kivi graphical uh, piece of that. That's not universal. There are other ones. There are definitely less common ones. But Kivi, you can find a ton of stuff on Stack Overflow. You can find a ton of tutorials on this channel. You can find a ton of tutorials on like freecodecamp.org and other places. Um, so 
I think that if you have an interest in developing mobile applications using Python, you're best off putting the time in to learn Kivi. But if you just want to crank out a fun game uh, quickly and flex your Python knowledge, then Tkinter, um, Pygame, or Kivi could all do the job for you. But just to give you a quick idea of how kind of how much more efficient um, or, or a Kivi game, it really looks polished. Go ahead and uh, check this one out. I followed a YouTube tutorial. Um, this was the first tutorial I ever followed and first game I made. And right off the bat, there was color. There was, um, you know, infinite land creation. You, I, I have kind of a stupid looking um, icon there, but sound, it, it very much looks like a full functioning mobile app. So... Uh, you know, I think that Kivi is the way you're going to want to go if your interest is in mobile application. But if your interest is purely in like 2D game creation for computers, then pick your favorite, commit to it, learn learn it. Um, you can do almost anything you want in almost any of those platforms. So pick one of the three, pick a, um, any of the others that you might read about, and you probably can teach yourself. But in my experience, those are the three you're going to see the most tutorials for. You'll get the most help um, from you know the other programmers out there on those three. And uh, also consider if you haven't started learning a programming language yet, really read into Python versus C or C Sharp or any of the visual-based languages. Um, because if all you're interested in for software is video game development, then you may actually want to steer away from Python. Its strength is not typically in the video game side of things. C or C Sharp, um, a lot of Visual Studio stuff that plays nicely with like Unity in the game engines is actually the better way to go for that. So ask yourself those questions. Hopefully you found this video useful. Uh, if you have any more questions or I didn't answer something here today you are wondering about, just let me know about it in the comments below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And uh, hopefully you are enjoying kind of developing games and learning software. It's been a lot of fun for me doing it over the last few years. And um, if you are interested uh, in following along, just uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a ton as we are fairly new. And uh, as always, good luck with your code and thanks for watching. Thanks. Bye.